Health is our greatest asset. You either have it or you envy it in others. The health of the nation has never been higher than it is today. Yet at the same time that all these people were working or enjoying themselves, this happened. Men, women and children nearly all need hospital treatment at some time or another. But for most people, hospital treatment used to be an expensive and worrying business. Since July 1948, hospitals have been a national responsibility. Part of the weekly insurance contribution we all now pay goes towards the upkeep of our hospitals. The hospitals all over the country, whether voluntary or run by local authorities, used to act to a large extent independently. But now county boundaries are not all important. The responsibility for running most of the hospitals is divided between 14 regional boards. The Middlesex County Council used to control several of the hospitals now included in the northwest and northeast metropolitan regions. The council acquired its hospitals in 1930. Like the regional boards today, they were immediately faced by many problems. Their hospital at Edmonton is typical of the kind of building they took over, more like a workhouse than a place of healing for the sick. And in fact, round about 50 years ago, hospitals were associated with workhouses. Grim and uncomfortable places that suggested to the patient that he was regarded more as a pauper than as a sufferer. All this had to be changed, so the council made plans. Plans that were put into action. A great deal was achieved. For instance, at Park Royal Hospital, a new maternity block was built. Opened in 1937, it was as different from the old types of building as possible. No long rows of beds, but small wards with four beds only, and designed to appear bright and summery whatever the weather. Single bedded rooms were provided for mothers who needed special attention. The babies were also given their own quarters in this modern nursery. The nurses here are all thoroughly trained for this particular kind of work, and for all of them it's the work they most want to do. This means that the babies are sure to be looked after with care and sympathy. The sister in charge of the nursery, in addition to other qualifications, is a specialist in midwifery and child welfare. Many of these babies will grow up on one of Middlesex's housing estates. The interwar years brought a greatly increased population to Middlesex, calling for more housing and more hospital services. To meet the growing needs of the Edgware area, for instance, the Red Hill County Hospital was extended. Each of the three stories of the new medical wing is almost a complete hospital in itself. Each floor is designed so that essential services are grouped around a central corridor leading to the wards. These wards are a special feature. Although larger than those in the maternity block at Park Royal, they are yet small enough to provide the personal touch that reduces the contrast with the homes that patients have left. This concern with the human side of hospital organisation was typical of the Middlesex County Council's outlook. While overcoming the many administrative problems involved, they gave a high place to the convenience and comfort of the patient. An example of this was their successful attempt to abolish the hours of dreary waiting, usually associated with the outpatient departments, by instituting an appointment system for their outpatients. Waiting can never be eliminated completely, but efforts were made to reduce it to a minimum by giving each patient a definite time for attending the hospital and seeing his doctor. 
This was made possible by arranging the timetable so that clinics for particular ailments were held regularly on the same days each week. But an efficient hospital system doesn't depend solely upon modern buildings and clever organisation. The qualities of the staff employed are all important. One of the outstanding features of Middlesex's hospitals was that instead of relying upon visits from outside specialists, they had specialists on their own full-time staff. Patients benefited considerably, getting more frequent attention and being under the same doctor throughout their treatment. The work done by Middlesex and other local authorities stands out as a fine achievement. The regional boards inherit the fine achievements, but they inherit many problems as well. One of the most acute of these is the shortage of nurses. People fall sick every day. Not all these illnesses are serious, but there are the seeds of tragedy in every case that has to be turned away from the hospital because of this. Beds unused and wards closed for just one reason. There aren't enough nurses to look after them. I'm not going to suggest that the only reason for this is low wages, but it's a pretty important reason these days when makeup and smart clothes really are a necessity. The girl who works in an office or factory has something to spare for these things, and for entertainment and holidays as well. But the average nurse? No. Nurses' wages have always lagged behind rising standards in pay. But in other ways, I've seen a lot of improvements take place while I've been a nurse. Working and living conditions, for instance. And it wouldn't be fair not to mention that overriding all the snags is the fact that for a normal girl, nursing is a deeply satisfying job in itself. I know I wouldn't leave it for any other. Several years ago, the council tackled staff shortage by tapping every source of assistance for their nurses, introducing many measures which will no doubt be continued by the regional boards. These measures included greatly increased domestic staffs. Nurses were relieved of unskilled routine duties by the introduction of ward orderlies. by using enrolled nurses and part-time nurses for the simple nursing tasks. And by employing male nurses for heavy work, especially the care of the chronic patients. These various grades of hospital work are now being introduced permanently into all hospitals. They will leave the fully trained nurse free to conserve her energies and skill for the most important duties. The key to efficient nursing is training. The casual methods of yesterday are giving place to organised courses of practical and theoretical instruction. As far as possible, lectures are held in working hours, giving the nurse the leisure she well deserves. Recreational facilities are important features of most hospitals today. Living and dining accommodation for students and other grades of nurses is being brought up to date. In the new nurses' homes, every nurse has a room to herself. And there are large and well-furnished rooms for general use. The old discipline, with its irksome restrictions, is rapidly becoming a thing of the past. Today, dances are held regularly in the nurses' homes. Girls are able to entertain friends at the hospital. Late passes are freely given for visits to cinemas and theatres. In fact, the modern nurse has the same off-duty freedom as the girl in any other occupation. And this is essential if she is to give of her best in her hard but tremendously satisfying work. I'm a hospital almoner. Not so familiar to you, perhaps, as the nurse. My job bridges the gap between the hospital itself and the public. Since the National Health Act, we've been able to forget about money, uh, which used to be our main concern, and concentrate upon our real job of helping people to use their hospitals to the best advantage. 
hospitals exist for you but they can't help you fully unless you cooperate by finding out what health services they provide and then using them these services are amazingly varied and often include in addition to gymnasiums and many forms of electrical treatment well equipped workshops here uh, people who've been seriously ill instead of being suddenly and violently precipitated back into life can ease themselves gently back into it yes the almoner can fill in forms for you arrange for convalescent homes artificial limbs and appliances antenatal care midwives and if necessary daily help while you're laid up Another outside job of a modern health service is mass radiography. The unit sets up anywhere, in schools, offices, factories. Usually, one convenient workplace is chosen as headquarters, and people from this and neighboring buildings come in for examination. Nobody is forced to attend, you come or you don't, but mass radiography is common sense. Mass radiography is one of the health services Middlesex have paid particular attention to developing. Their units are equipped with the very latest apparatus, operated by expert radiographers. It's better to find out whether you have tuberculosis in its early unsuspected stages when it can be cured than to wait until the condition becomes bad enough to show itself and make cure more difficult. Records show that only about four persons in every thousand examined by Middlesex's mass radiography units are found to need treatment. And those four get a lucky break in having their disease discovered in its early curable stages. For those few who do need treatment in order to get well again, there are fine sanatoria all over the country. Middlesex built this one, one of the most modern. Its two fine wings can accommodate 300 patients. Patients sometimes have to spend many months resting in bed, even though they don't feel particularly ill. Boredom may slow down their recovery. At Harefield, they guard against this by encouraging rug making, model making, and other occupations. Patients sometimes acquire a skill which could be turned to account later on. For patients able to get about, there are workshops for weaving, basketry, and carpentry. There's also a printer's shop that produces forms and so on required by the hospital. Children have a block all to themselves. Special facilities here include a school, so that education isn't interrupted. Even though they've had a bad start, these children stand a good chance of being able to lead healthy and normal lives. Middlesex County Council and other local authorities have good reason to be proud of their achievements. During their stewardship of many of the nation's hospitals, they made a number of notable advances. The regional boards have adopted the best of these and will develop them. Middlesex and others changed many dreams to realities. But war prevented the realization of all their ambitions. Some of these had passed the planning stage. Models for the hospitals of the future were ready. It will now be up to the regional boards to take over these visions of the drawing office and make them realities of brick and stone, of equipment and service, for the benefit of us all. Wow.